let's talk about. In case you didn't know, it was a very nonchalantly little announcement in Belgium. The broadcaster RTBF, they have confirmed that Elio Iliot Vasamilet, um, apparently he's probably just going to go by his first name, Iliot, has been selected internally to represent Belgium at the Eurovision Song Contest 2019 in Tel Aviv, Israel. And it was apparently following like a telepro report. The broadcaster made the announcement unexpectedly, actually. Um, just be like, and here's our report. By the way, Elliot is going to Eurovision. Moving on. You know, it was <laughs> maybe a little more, but it was fairly like, you know, not very exciting. Um, the 18-year-old singer, he's 18, so very young. Um, he has previously took part in the Belgian version of The Voice now competing even bigger in a bigger competition, Eurovision. Now, Pierre Dumoulin, um, he is of the Roscoe group. Uh, he will be in charge and responsible for writing the song, and um, he was involved with Eurovision before um, in 2017. Um, All Alone in the Danger Zone, City Lights. Were you a fan, Zach, of City oh. Lights? <laughs> oh. I'm trying to remember. I, I was trying to remember also. I just remember everyone was like, this is going to bomb. This is not going to do well. She sounds horrible. Um, but it did well. It finished well, short. but keep in mind, if you remember, you were there. Um, she was getting better and better throughout the rehearsals. And that's one of the things that we need to make. She was re not good at all in the beginning. And then I never said she was like perfect, but she certainly found her place. So as rehearsals kept going on, things changed a little there. And that's the beauty about, you know, rehearsal. Sometimes the first rehearsal can be so bad or like imperfect. And then what do you see the final product? You remember Estonia 2015, um, goodbye to yesterday. Then it could never figure out anything with the staging and the lighting. And then on the night, it looked perfect. You remember yeah. that? Did she get better in 2017? I mean, she get a little, yeah, no, she wouldn't I mean vocally. She was never great, but it. She, you remember she was she like not nerves. even moving. She got she over was, her nerves. Yeah, and yeah, I, she got I, over people her nerves. saying she's a young singer, yada yada yada. I mean, someone can make the same case. Is it appropriate to have this young of a singer representing Belgium again? But you know, age has nothing to do, I think, with professionalism. Yeah. Or in professionalism, I'm saying I'm not saying that someone who is nervous on stage or a stage fright is unprofessional. I mean, we see artists talking about nerves all the time. I know there is a story about Jesse J who's well-renowned artist who still gets stage fright. And I yes. think uh, the issues that Pastora Soler had um, with performing, she took some time off because she was getting anxious during stage. And I remember if people remember the YouTube video where she fainted and collapsed on stage. Yes. And I think a lot of that had to do with some of her nerves and exhaustion. Um, so I don't think people should use age against, you know, artists. I mean, well, let's I think, be honest, I, I think Belgium on with the 13 year old. Yeah. Back in 1986? Yes, 86. Yes. And yeah. no, certainly you shouldn't use it against or for them. Because, you know, that's certainly something if you want to do it, then you need to be on top of it. Uh, let me just finish real quick. So he wrote, uh, or co wrote City Lights, uh, clearly a fan favorite. Um, and he was very complimentary of um, Iliot's talent. He was saying, as soon as I saw Iliot's performance at his blind audition, I felt that he had that extra stuff that I'm looking for in an artist, that sensitivity and crack that's needed to convey the emotions. Um, so we have to be a little bit more patient though, as far as the song is concerned. It's not going to be released until at least February, probably mid late February is the estimate. So, um, but at least we have the name of the singer. Stay tuned for updates on that. So, um, once again, Zach, we kind of talked about it briefly already. Your first impression of this very low-key selection? Um, you know, I really don't have an opinion about it. I just feel like there was just so much other news this week that it just was sort of like a PS, by the way, a Belgium. Yeah. But a name yeah, should be big, right. but it wasn't really. I mean, yes, it was reported, by the way, but usually a name being released, that's a huge thing, but not this time. And that kind of, is kind of funny, right? And I guess part of it is just maybe the results from last year where Belgium didn't qualify. And I think maybe just, you know, for a while there when Belgium was finishing fourth, well, they finished, you know, Roberto in 2013, really surprised people, did pretty well. Then, you know, then you had... Um, Rhythm Inside, which finished fourth, and then Laura, which finished tenth, which I think shocked people, and then um, Blanche finishing fourth. 
I think there was a really good momentum and then just kind of, unfortunately, last year, the momentum dropped. Um, but, you know, I think some people are saying on the chat that there are two different broadcasters that do odds years and even years. Yes. And this is, you know, I, I feel like I can't remember how the two announcements were for 2015, 2013, 2017. 2013, I remember because they had the live performances and Roberto was sick and he just sounded horrible. And he only had devil verses off the song. Yeah. But I, I guess it's just sort of, we'll see what happens. And I know Lily mentioned something about, um, you know, about, you know, let's not judge people for professionalism and youth. Look at the junior Eurovision uh, performers. I mean, they are well seasoned. They are ready to go. Well seasoned, that sounds horrible. It sounds like I'm talking about food. But I mean, well seasoned, like, you know, they, they, they have experience. They know what to expect. Yes. No, you're absolutely yeah. right. You're absolutely right. So, yeah, I was a little bit disappointed with the way it was announced as well. But, you know, I mean, it seems like, like here's the artist. Well, let's see. I guess they don't care about a whole announcement, which is fine, I guess. It comes down to the song in the end. Um, but as you just pointed out, Zach, so they had this momentum going, Belgium. Um, and you could say, or can you say, that they kind of it kind of stalled now with last year's non-qualification. I still think it was a good song last year. I mean, it's subjective, but I think it was a solid effort. It was not like a lack of quality there. Um, I think it was just a matter of staging didn't work out and the fact that it was in the very tough semi. I mean, the juries went for it. If it were only up to the juries, it would have easily qualified, but then the televoters were like, um, I think th if you want, if you want my opinion, I think a lot of people are not ready for the announcement of no LCD screens in Portugal, uh, and yeah. some people rose to the occasion, and some people just did not know what to do with it. Um, and I wonder if Belgium was one of those where just, you know, they had something really cool with the first shot that they did, focused on her eyes, and then it just kind of went with her sashaying around the front of the stage and and nothing more. And I was in Brussels, I was at a bar there watching semi-final one. And we have to remember also that semi-final one last year was, you know, everyone called it a bloodbath and it really was. Yes. I mean, there are songs in that semi that would have qualified had they been in semi-final two. Absolutely. It was. And when you look at the final results, you see most of the semi-final one songs are way higher than the second semi-final, especially with the televoters. So yeah, it was not just a made up, sorry. It happened, but that's, you know, it's it's only fair. It sucks, but what else can you do? Um, somebody's asking, um, I couldn't find much on this Elliot on Google. I wonder if he's well known in Belgium. Very interesting because when I prepared for the articles, you know, when I wrote about it and um, then prepared for this live stream, I found very little information. He has this very quickly put together Wikipedia, two lines. Um, I searched for his name in Google, pictures like that. He has like three pictures on there, you know. He's, I highly doubt that he's very well known. They're going with a brand new, fresh talent there that um, maybe will just become a big thing after your vision. But as of right now, he is not a name. Uh, Alexander Knobel is asking, do you think that Belgium's strategy of investing in young talent is a good idea, Zach? I'm going to give that one to you. Well, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a bigger question, you know, is investing in newer artists, younger talent, a better approach? Um, and I think people would probably argue in a couple different ways. The first way I would think is that maybe the more established talent don't want to compete in Eurovision because there's only one way to go and that's down. Yes. Um, yes. And then um, I always like to think of Eurovision sort of as a, as a good stepping stone for artists. Um, but it does piss me off when artists kind of poo, so I'm trying to think how to say the S word without saying the S word. Um, they poo on, um, on Eurovision, like what's her name from the UK, Sandy Shaw, where she sort of doesn't want anything to do with it. I don't like that, you know? Yes. Um, I like the artists when they are willing to say, you know, Eurovision, it's, it's kind of a crazy show, but I gained a lot from it and I have no regrets. And I think... Belgium strategy for the even no the odd years is a good one um I think you've seen like the 2015 artist and I'm not saying his name because I don't want to butcher it I don't know how to pronounce it who uh, rhythm inside how do you pronounce his name oh Loic is it Loic Loic I, I, I don't know you know who you're talking I, about yeah I've led you astray before by telling you it's pronounced Belarusian and not Belarusian and I don't want to make the same mistake again right. um 
but he seems to have a pretty decent career since your oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, yes. Blanche, I'm not sure about. Um, Roberto, I haven't heard anything from. And maybe, you know, it just it really depends on the artist and what they can provide. And, yes. you know, it's kind of your vision's the first step, but it's really up to them at that point to figure out what they do and to kind of create an identity that goes beyond your vision. Yeah. All right. Now, that's very that's a very good point. Very um, nicely summarized. And I just want to add at the very end, I personally, I'm glad it's a guy. Not that I have an issue with women, of course, but, you know, after three ladies, I think it's in Belgium time for another dude to take the stage. And here's the thing. I'm usually excited when I see a guy's name come up only because Eurovision in general is very female dominated. Like there's always at least 60, 70% are women uh, performers. So um, I'm always kind of hoping it's going to be more of an even split. As a matter of fact, I wish there would be more bands as well. And um, so every time there's a guy, I'm like, yay, we're going to bring up the numbers a little bit because I do enjoy that as well. So I'm happy about that Belgium went with a guy this year. And um, one last question before we have, because we have not much time left, Jesus. Oh, and everyone's saying that Blanche's new music is really good. So I guess I need to check it out. <laughs> yeah. And yep. um, the last, um, do you think that Belgium will ever return to a national final? Granted, we have two different uh, broadcasters, they have different approaches, but for the last few years, both of them have only done the internal selection. Do you think they should, or do you want them to go back to a national final? Oh, it really depends. It's not really our decision as fans, unfortunately. It's the broadcaster deciding what's going to be budget-wise, budget, budget -wise, what's the most economically viable, as well as what's going to help get ratings. And I just am not sure what the strategy of Belgium is. It seems for me with Spain, their prime motive is to get a show that drives ratings yeah. nationally in Spain and maybe less so about how they actually do at Eurovision. Then the uh, Netherlands does the opposite because they do it internally now. And number one, they do much better doing internally, but they also get bigger names, right? Mm -hmm. uh, go to Eurovision, which probably would have not been interested if they had to go through a national final.